new season, new animes to watch. Summer is bringing the heat. No, not that guy. I mean, a new set of animes with some really hype returning animes that we were all waiting for, as well as an above average lineup with a few standout animes for the season. So, I hope everyone's ready for the anime of the year, The Bending Machine Isekai. Just play the intro. We start with the returning animes. For you romantic lovers, there is the side stories of Horimija the Missing Pieces. If you want something a bit more spicy, Sugar Apple Fairy Tale returns after the NTR ending of season 1. Rent a Girlfriend is returning with its dumpster fire of romantic plots. And the King of Romcoms is returning with Masamune Kun's Revenge R. If you want romcom but CG, there is always The Duke of Death season 2. Or if you want to confuse yourself with weird titles and disappointing sequels, The Devil is a Part Timer season 2 is back. Wait. I thought it was season 3. Bungo Stray Dogs is back for a season 5, and some of the most awaited animes are returning. First, we have Bleach, following the Thousand Year Blood War. Jujutsu Kaisen is listening to its fans and focusing only on Gojo for the first arc. And Mushoku Tensei fans are eating good tonight. I mean, just look at the animation. Why is a cake better animated than 90% of all animes? Oh, and talking about animation. We start the new animes with a bit of a weird one. The masterful cat is depressed again today is your typical comedy slice of life about an office worker going to work, having typical problems and returning home to her 6'5 cat that makes her dinner. You know, the usual. Only Go Hands, the studio known as the Queen Bee of anime, would come up with this. And crazy enough, this is not the only show Go Hands made this season. The girl I like forgot her glasses came out of nowhere. But what it felt like an animation studio flexing during the first 30 seconds of the show became a bit annoying and borderline unwatchable by the end of the episode. Overedited extreme use of CG, unnatural hair movement, and mistakes in animation. It is difficult to enjoy a sweet rom-com when there is so much unnecessary things on screen. At least they tone it down for episode 2. Have you ever thought about what is the future of humanity? What if we put our minds in the body of a robot? If we die and we have a backup, are we the same person? Can a robot with preset parameters compete and grow in a competitive sport after reaching its limit? What are the ethical limitations of using machines? The gene of AI takes a look at all these questions and makes you think about the future of AI. But moving on to the trashy isekai for the season. As always, there are a few options to watch from. So I will just list them for you and you can just pick your poison. My unique skill makes me OP even at level 1, in which a guy gets transported to another world with the ability of super rare drops from monsters, and a bunch of waifus, of course. Am I actually the strongest? In which a guy reincarnates as a prince of a kingdom with OP powers, but oops, they think he was born without magic, so he gets adopted and tries to live a leisure life. I did think that the baby floating was funny. Reign of the Seven Spellblades, in which seven magical swordsmen go to a magical academy. And the Classroom of Heroes, which is basically the same, but only two main characters, and the main guy is clearly a combination of the hero and the demon lord. The Great Cleric, a guy reincarnates and asks for healing magic, but apparently all other healers are trash that only care about money. I personally like this one. Saint Cecilia and Pastor Lawrence is just a rom-con with fantasy and religion. Sweet Reincarnation is about a sweet chef reincarnated after being crushed from his own creation, and of course has OP powers but only wants to create sweets. And lastly, the trash isekai of the season, Reborn as a Bending Machine, in which a bending machine lover dies after trying to save a bending machine because of reasons, and reborns in another world as a bending machine. 
Honestly, I thought it would be worse. Don't get me wrong, it's still terrible, but it has its funny moments. Moving on to the romance. The Dreaming Boy is a realist, focuses on a guy that after pestering a girl for months, decides that he should be a bit more reserved as he's bothering the girl too much and realizes that this will just make her hate him more. But what is that? She actually likes him and she was just being a tsundere? That's why tsunderes wouldn't work in real life. Tenpuru brings a bit more of the yechi into the mix, as a guy tries to become a monk to leave all his earthly desires, but mistakenly joins a female monastery. The rom-com side is fine and the yechi is good, but Jesus Christ, they pick the worst choice for the main guy's voice actor. He just sounds like a 40-year-old. And we have a contender for best romance drama in My Happy Marriage. Seriously, the first episode goes hard, showing how a girl was mistreated by her stepmom, half-sister, and even her father. She gets treated as a servant. The guy she likes gets stolen by her sister, and she is sent to be married to a famously bad general. But don't worry guys, he is in fact an Ikemen. My only complaint is that episode 2 brings supernatural monsters and abilities into the mix. I would rather just have the heartwarming story of a mistreated girl slowly opening her heart to the cold but caring guy. But if you're looking for some good drama, well, Look no further as we got the newest addition of Bill and S. Isekai in the most heretical Last Boss Queen, in which a girl gets reincarnated as the villainous first princess of the kingdom. Her path is leading her to downfall of the kingdom, and her death to the hands of her sister and love interests. So she bows down to never become the villainess. Honestly, I thought this would be another light-hearted story, but as it is usual with the villainous Isekais, they are not afraid of trying something different, and this anime is going into the darker, more drama-filled story. And honestly, I'm all for it. If you have any love for drama or villainous animes, you will love this one. If you're looking for something different, Ayaka brings the spirit exorcism into the mix, as the son of a famous exorcist is taken back to his childhood home, in which the disciples of his father are teaching him how to fight the spirits, so far, I'm enjoying the story and the power dynamic between the disciples and the sun, but I can feel the BL looming in the distance. For you epic gamers out there, we have the new anime adaptation of Atelier Ryza. Honestly, this feels like an extra for the people who have already played the game, as there are clear nods to the story and side quests, including the literal goat. But I personally feel that the story was secondary to the gameplay, so I understand that it will not be for everyone. And finally, we end things with some of the animes that I personally think are the best of the season. First, let's start with the level 1 Demon Lord and One Room Hero. This adult comedy centers around the hero and the Demon Lord. After a fierce battle, the Demon Lord is defeated, only to promise that he will come back someday. Ten years later, he finally resurrects. Still weak, with almost no powers, but still decides to look for the hero. But to his surprise, he finds a good-for-nothing bomb living as a shot-in inside his apartment. The hero leads you to believe that after the war, nobody needed the hero. But your feelings of compassion is quickly shattered after you find out that he was a player, cheating on girls, having affairs, and saying cheesy quotes on TV. The Demon Lord decides to bring him back to shape so that he can have another glorious battle. Honestly, I love this type of shows, and the comedy is on point. Next, we have Helk, focusing on the Demon Realm, that is looking for a replacement to the Demon Lord that was defeated by the hero. A tournament arc is happening, and surprisingly, a human is fighting. But it looks like everyone loves him saying how he hates humans, fighting honorably, and making our female lead crazy as she thinks that he is planning something. But then, there is the mystery of his past, the disappearance of human settlements, and the appearance of winged people. As the plot thickens, this is a show that you must be looking out for. 
Moving on, for the shonen lovers, we have a bit of a different show. A city academy in which people fight each other for stars. Our main guy just got lucky and defeated a famous 7 star and won the special red star that allows him to create a lie. Now, in order to not be expelled, he has to pretend to be a 7 star and outsmart all of the other challengers trying to take him down. This one feels like a combination of Packet to Test and Classroom of Elite, and honestly, I'm all for it. I enjoy how the guy is just bluffing his way to the top. Ah, this Dark Gathering has to be one of the most unexpected animes I have seen in a while. Bringing the horror tag into the mix, it tells the story of a guy with the ability to attract spirits and the occult as he joins a young girl that, after an accident in which she lost her parents and her mother's spirit was stolen, she became a genius that can't kill spirits. So they are working together in order to take care of dangerous spirits. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I thought an anime was actually scary. And excluding a bit of unnecessary comedy and a bit of weird decisions in the plot, this is looking to be one of the best horror animes I have ever seen. Now we have undead murder farce. In a world where monsters exist, a half-human, half-monster is looking for a way to heal himself from a deadly disease, and an immortal head has the means to help him. As these two works as detectives through the world, they try to uncover the mysteries of the man who created him and stole the immortal body. The mystery is on point, and I like how they started in Japan but quickly moved to Europe for a vampire case. And lastly, we have what has to be the best new anime for this season. Imagine, you're an office worker in a black company. You spend ungodly amounts of hours in the office, never getting paid for extra hours. Your only solace is a cute girl working in accounting. But unfortunately, she's the mistress of the CEO. You have no reasons to keep on living, and honestly, have thought about suicide. You are basically an office zombie, every day looking grimmer and darker. But then, it happens. The zombie apocalypse. As zombies are overrunning the city, his first instinct is to escape. But then, he realizes. Wait, does this mean I don't have to work anymore? Seeing how, as soon as he realizes this, the screen is filled with colors, he looks happy. Finally, he's free. It is weird how, in the human world, he was feeling like a zombie. But in the zombie world, he finally feels like a human. As he escapes, he decides he will finally live his life. Starting with resigning for his job and telling his feelings to the girl he likes. Now creating a bucket list of things that he wants to do before becoming a zombie, we see how a man finally is free to live his life. And honestly, I'm all for it. And with that, we come to the conclusion of this video. Which is your anime for the season? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, see you guys next time.